Honey Brook. Honey Brook Township is 25 square miles and two thirds in agricultural use. We really need to pay attention to what's going on with our environment, not just trying some uh, energy source and then causing destruction to the environment and then have to make a massive effort to clean up after the fact. Solar has big costs has come down considerably. What I did locally was to create a council of government. We have pulled in 12 municipalities working together as the Western Chester County Council of Government. Uh, municipalities are on tight budgets, so the share cost across the municipalities, there's great opportunities. For instance, our township uh, vehicle, if we were able to replace that with a, a hybrid vehicle, but right now, we don't have um, the immediate need to replace that. The Westchester area COG, uh, they have uh, goals, sustainable goals for 2035, 2050. Uh, I would like to align with their goals. The Western Chester County COG aligning with the other COGs and having adopted it through the Council of Governments that the municipalities will jump on board when they see that the surrounding municipalities have um, uh, adopted this and it probably be in their best interest to follow suit. We have an industry that dominates our energy policy and, and that's that's where why we're in the situation we're in. One acre would provide all the energy the township uses. One acre solar array. So far, Joint Parade 400, we got the ball rolling. We've looked at the township's usage, and we also took a survey of what the township residents wanted at election day a year ago um, to what the township wanted to see our EASA doing. And a lot of it was energy, so renewable energy. We understand that you have proposed a resolution about the clean energy to the Board of Supervisors. The EAC proposed it to the Board of Supervisors, and we had a unanimous uh, vote on that. It was seven people saying yes. So the electric is needs are the first in the shorter deadline, and the, the heat infrastructure of, of heating and cooling, et cetera, and fuel for cars and tractors and trucks and salt trucks next later on by 2050 you know my generation will be dead i had an environmental uh club at the high school i taught for 20 years and i know and i they were passionate young people there's a stem academy here in Towningtown area and i'm sure they're interested in the the, the engineering aspects of the, the solutions teachers tend to we don't want to proselytize so we um don't we don't push agendas like this, but this now it's climate is not Republican or Democrat. I've been to other township meetings and you're controlling my future. No, I don't want to do this. I don't want you telling the government tell me what to do. All these things are made up in their head. For a township, we've already done some modeling and it's it's gonna be cost effective because it holds the price at the price that it's now for twenty five years. The township will run on clean renewable energy. People will be happy about it and proud of the systems. And uh, those who are seeing it happen will start following what's going on and mimic what's going on for other people and not being afraid. There are progressive models in America and we need to look outside of our state has just kept us on this path that we need to break. I think the benefits of relying on clean energy are many. So many of us know that we're facing an uh, growing crisis when it comes to climate change. When we are able to move our communities and our state and our country to a clean energy economy, that is going to be a terrific way to boost the economy and to create really good new green jobs. Our borough council did unanimously pass a Ready for 100 resolution here in the borough uh, specifically to go to 100% clean electricity by 2035 and 100% clean energy for transportation and heating by 2050. And we are one of many localities here in this region of the state who have done so. We have hired a co company to write a clean energy transition plan for our entire Westchester region. 
you can save more money on your utility bill than you pay out in your loan payment every month. I mean, what greater opportunity is there for a company? You can do deep energy efficiency work at virtually no cost to the company. A lot of people making a small change makes a change. Absolutely. You said it better than I could have. <laughs> if you have a boiler uh, that heats the water to heat your home and it's on its last legs, that is an opportunity. We can begin to electrify our homes anytime we have to invest anyway. We might as well do the right thing. I think it's really important that we move to 100% renewable energy. Um, I've been worried about this since the 1990s. I'm that old. <laughs> and it is not getting better. In the 1980s, it was always about individual choices, about, you know, you can do this and you can do that. But we need to have systemic changes in order to really make a difference. We just got a soul smart uh, status. We just got a bronze status. My first project was the street life uh, procurement project. I heard it and I was thinking, this is great. If I cannot sell this to the board of supervisors, you know, I will fail in everything. We got the charging station installed at, at the three different library. So I made an overview, we, we got quotes, I said, these are the options, you know, what do you think? And then they voted upon that. Well, I hope that uh, sustainability will be an integral part of decision making. Usually when I buy something, I always think, okay, you know, can I be recycled? Can I give it away? That it's just uh, like a normal part of decision making. I'm a member of a Presbyterian church. There was a social justice committee. They were like focused on hunger, education, and uh, racism. Then I spoke to the chair of the social justice committee and I said, well, you cannot really focus only on these subjects if you don't think about the environment. So you be can become an earth care um, congregation. Every year you have to do more things to actually become more sustainable. So I gave a presentation uh, in session and they agreed that they wanted to become an earth care congregation. We changed our lights to LED. We've done an, an audit, analyzed all the utility bills. I think many, I think schools and churches can really do that because most people never look at their energy bills. They see it as a given. There is clear support also from the pastors. We try to educate. I stole one idea from units actually. It was about the military, about the military and climate change. There's the wonderful movie called The Burden that came out uh, a few years ago. The main thing that it did was showcase the military's concern about rapid climate change and how that is such a driver of destabilization all over the globe. We saw other people who would never attend an environmental presentation attending this meeting. Everybody should just be involved. <laughs> <laughs>